My name is Abigail, and I've been a treasure hunter my whole life, ever since I was a little girl. I've always loved old, brittle, beautiful things, and I don't think there's any better way to spend a weekend than going to garage sales, estate sales, antique and thrift stores, and what could be nicer than going to an open-air flea market in the middle of summer? I actually spent many years in corporate America, but I've given all of that up now to do the one thing that I love best, and that is to search out fun, funky, and fabulous finds for my store, Abigail's Artful Abode in Polesbo, Washington, and for my Etsy shop of the same name. Now I've started this new channel where I go over my hauls every week with you and give you a little history about each item. I'm having so much fun doing these videos and I hope you enjoy them as much as I enjoy making them. So let's get going, let's get thrifting, and let's learn something new. So first up, I have this super tall cylindrical uh, hand hammered copper vase. So I think this vase is probably along the lines of an arts and crafts piece. So for those people that have that arts and crafts look, which is, um, you'll, I'll put a picture up here, but it's basically a lot of wood and darker tones, really beautiful, but um, not a style for everybody, obviously. But I think this is very arts and crafts, but it would also be an amazing piece in somebody who was into mid-century modern, had a mid-century modern home because that genre also um, utilizes a lot of metal. So I know this came from Mexico because it has a sticker on the bottom and it probably came from a town that specializes in copper because in Mexico, um, every town has its own specialty. So you'll go to towns where they specialize in copper, uh, pottery, uh, basket weaving, uh, furniture making. And so I'm sure that this beautiful piece, because it's so well done, was done by hand and in one of those specialist towns. So um, I want to show you these, which are kind of all along the line of kind of that stark look. Uh, these are amazing. So these candlesticks uh, are brass and they're heavy. They're heavy brass. That's how I know that there are older pieces you see on the bottom. They don't have a stamp. Um, they have those screws on here. Um, so these are older and I want to call these a uh, brutalist design, a uh, very mid-century modern look to them. Uh, unusual. I've never seen anything like these. The Brutalist look it was very kind of more of a stark geometric um, lines, harsh lines. Um, I don't know how else to describe it, but when I see something that I, that looks Brutalist, I, I know what it is. Um, so anyway, so these are great. These are going to go on Etsy. They're also going to go into the... Next up, I want to show you this beautiful tray. So this is burlwood, which is walnut. And I really didn't hold out any hope of finding any information on this, but come to find out somebody in France has this very exact tray with a different wood around the rim. And they had it along with a set of matching coasters for $175. It is a vin it is vintage. I she had it listed as kind of a bar piece. I would never ever put any any kind of water, anything that had condensation on this, but I think it would be amazing on a man's dresser like to put keys and jewelry and change in. I doubt well, I know I'm not going to mark it at $175, but um, apparently it is vintage, it is old, and it's definitely gorgeous. Next up, and here's a little, in case you didn't know anything about this style. So I love this kind of over-the-top filigreed 
type of vanity pieces. It's all lined in velvet. So this particular style is called Hollywood Regency and it developed, it was started in the 19, it wasn't even started, but the name was coined in the 1930s by Dorothy Draper, who literally, <laughs> literally costumed all the movie stars. And um, she called it Hollywood Regency because, um, well, that's where she worked. And it just calls to mind this very glamorous, very glitzy lifestyle. Um, all this, and you can find furniture, you can find tr trinkets, you can find lots of vanity pieces like this. Um, and um, it was very, very popular from the 1930s through the 1970s, but it's coming back. And it, I think it is because it's just like this, over the top maximalist kind of tongue in cheek glamour um, that I, I personally love. So I actually just passed up this white marble topped coffee table where the base was gold um, only because there was no way I was going to pick up that marble top and I don't have anywhere to put it. So it broke my heart that I couldn't buy it, but I just couldn't think of what to do with that piece but um I think there's going to be a big resurgence of Hollywood Regency and pieces like this are going to disappear really quickly so I'll put this on um Etsy I'll also take it into the store and I'll probably price it at like $45 along those lines is this little gold frame I know it's old because the picture's old. I think it's probably from the 1970s. It's also got this like gold gilt. And I just imagine like this, um, you know, somebody who's into boho or eclectic decor, or maybe a teenager just picking this up for their, um, for their abode. So I thought it was super cute. Um, and that's gonna go to the store. It'll probably be on Etsy too, cause it's unusual. Um, these I absolutely had to buy. <laughs> I think they're super cool. They're just two metal balls on these wood bases. That They're not old, but um, you know, I think they would look cool in a mid-century modern house or even in a modern house on a bookshelf. Lately, I've really been into bookshelves. I don't, unfortunately, I don't have room for a bookshelf myself, but I love like the idea of creating like a vignette on a bookcase. And for that, you absolutely have to have bookends. So I'm always on the hunt for bookends and they sell really well. So they're super popular in the store. This piece, uh, again, unusual. So this is actually an old piece. You can see it's very detailed. The handle is very detailed. The spout is very detailed. It was manufactured by the Rochester Stamping Company in New York. And you see it's got mixed metals on it. I actually did use some um, copper um, cream on it to shine it up. And I I didn't do a complete job and a lot of people don't like to do that. They think it ruins the patina and you can see the patina on the lid, but to me it just looked dirty and so I decided that it needed to be polished up. Okay, so this is a married piece. They call it married because it really isn't meant to go together, but I thought it looked really good together. So when I saw it, I decided I needed both the pieces. The tray is wood and it's inlaid in like this brass. It's a beautiful tray. I don't know what you would serve on it or maybe you just have it as a decorative piece. And then the stand, it's just really cool. It, to me, it's very boho, right? It almost looks like bamboo, but it's wood. Well, come to find out that this little tray was made to hold a Turkish tea set. So it's not supposed to have a wood tray. It's supposed to have a brass tray. And then you would put your Turkish tea set on top of it. 
Um, I'll be on the lookout for a cop or a brass tray now, but for the meantime, I'm going to list these uh, together. Um, and I was just really glad to find out what this was. I've never seen anything like it. To me, it looks like a plant sand. You could actually put this on top and put a pot right there. So I thought it was really neat. Um, I think it's unusual. I'm always looking for unusual things. That's kind of like my MO. And then I'm also looking for things that I know that people love and that are always on the lookout for, like more brass. Brass, 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 brass animals, brass candlesticks. These are so popular. These particular ones will go in any decor, traditional, um, boho, eclectic. Um, they're beautiful pieces right? I don't know how old they are. They have a nice weight to them and I love the style of them. Unfortunately, I went to Home Goods today and candles were on my list and then I left and I didn't look for candles. I did look for lampshades because I found some beautiful brass um, lamps for my mom's place who, uh, which I'm decorating and so they had beautiful linen lampshades but I totally forgot the candles. So I need to go back. I need candles so that when I do photos for Etsy or Instagram, then, you know, they'll look complete. All right, let me see what else. So I picked up another little pottery, piece of pottery. This is stoneware. Um, the one thing on this one is it is signed on the back, which means that the, a person actually made this. And honestly, most of these pieces were not mass, uh, mass manufactured, mass produced. So most of them were handmade, hand thrown, signed on the bottom. Like this one's glazed on the inside. They're wonderful pieces. For those of you that love that boho style, I mean, they're just, enduring pieces so they'll last forever so my goal is to actually have one big shelving unit at the store where that's all we have is stoneware ceramics and pottery from kind of that era and all those like um, muted tones and blues and browns and russets and sienna um, because I think um, people really dig that look right now and so um, I'm having fun picking them up and I can't wait to bring them into the store. So let's see, one other item um, is this beautiful wall hanging. It's got fish, it's very colorful, very, very co colorful and it's wool. And one of the reasons that I picked this up is because I just got back from Mexico. I was there for a month. You can catch my all my journey. You can catch my journey to all the different places I went to and all the different things I bought on my Instagram account, Abigail's Artful Abode. But I went to the city of Oaxaca, which is an, an it's a stunning city. Great architecture, great food. And I went to visit a little town where the Zapotec Indians um, live. And they actually specialize in rug weaving. So you see all these amazing rugs. And what was really fascinating is there are still families that use natural dyes that were developed over hundreds of years. So they use like cactus fungi nuts, seeds, trees, dirt, flowers, like, and they grind them up and they make these amazing dyes. And then of course, you know, they get, they gather the wool and they have these big looms and they hand loom all of these rugs and it takes them months to complete just one uh, larger rug. And so when I saw this hanging and I saw that it was wool, I had to grab it. You know, whether it's made in that area or not, I don't know. <clears throat> Sorry. But 
um, it just called to mind the Zapotec Indians and how they still weave their um, symbols of their tribe and their history into every rug that they make. So if you know their history, you'll see all these like symbols and keys on their um, finished work. So that's it for me. Um, I hope to see you next week and I hope you have a great day. I hope the thrifting gods are on your side when you go out and thrift and I definitely hope they're on my side and so that way I can share a lot more of the treasures that I find next week. So I'll talk to you later. Have a wonderful day and goodbye.